Marsden, City Council made your meeting to order Tuesday, December 1st. Uh, would you please stand and join with me in the set pledge of allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic, of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> he threw us off. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Before we start, uh, we uh, just want to share with everybody. First of all, I want to welcome the few that's here <laughs> in the uh, in the uh, program today. But uh, we've got uh, our council members. Uh, due to the virus of COVID nineteen, uh, are spread all over town, and a lot of them are on by phone. So we're going to probably have to uh, just, I don't think I asked you to come together and speak into your phones and uh, we'll do the best we can today. We have a roll call, Bev? Nelson? Yes. Knapp? Donlan? Right here. Good child? Yes. Wick? Yes. Motion to approve the agenda. Is there a second? Good child, second. Motion made and second to approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. <laughs> Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, we're going to move on to the uh, general discussion. And uh, the way we handle our general discussion is if anybody has uh, any concerns uh, or uh, complaints or Anything that they'd like to visit about, if the, the open discussion is open at this time, the way we handle that is, is we ask them to stand up to the podium and state their name and address, and uh, the council members uh, cannot make the uh, determining effort uh, at this time, but they're always willing to serve to listen and follow through later. So, is there anybody that uh, has any open discussion at this time? I do. Oh, yes, please. Uh, up to the podium. I'm sorry, I didn't ring it. Nope. My name's Carson Klein. I live at 715 4th Street Southwest. And I was wondering if, like, we can do anything about the semis that park down by Provisions packing down by on 4th Street. Um, it's, I don't know, I'm sure you guys have gotten a lot of complaints about it not, I don't know, blocking people's views and whatever, what else, but it's a huge safety issue. Um, I, so I live off an alley. Uh, when, I back, when I pull out of my driveway, I'm lucky enough that I can at least turn around and pull out facing forward, but there's always, there's semis that line up the whole rest of my block, so when I pull out of my alley, it's a crapshoot on whether or not I'm going to get T-boned by a car coming either out of the trailer court or going into the trailer court. Um, yeah, and I, I don't know, I called last week a couple times, they said that this would be the best place to go to. Um, I have some pictures of what it looks like down there. Uh, I'd imagine most people don't just venture down there for their own free will. Um, and in the pictures you can kind of see, I mean, there. it's a tunnel. So if you look at that one, yeah, I have more. And then also on the uh, the first one is a map showing all of the places where I've seen semis parked. Uh, there's, in general, when I count, there's 12 to 18 semis parked on 4th Street and 8th Avenue. Um, I I don't I don't get what what needs to be done in order to change this. Uh, I looked up the city ordinances and it says that you need to park, or yeah, you can't be parked within 10 feet of an intersection. There's a picture there of a semi parked within 10 feet of the intersection. Uh, it says you can't park blocking a crosswalk. That same picture shows a semi blocking the crosswalk. Um, you're not supposed to park, I think, within 10 feet of an alley. They line up at the edge of our alley. Um, I, 
I, I understand it's probably not going to be a huge change, but if we could at least get like no parking signs, because um, to me, like, it's really not worth the police department's time to for me to call the cops every single time that a car is parked or a semi is parked blocking anything. <clears throat> and then the one of the images in there shows a semi jackknife in the intersection. That was that semi sat there for about five minutes. Um, in the middle of the intersection, there's cars coming out of the trailer park that were going through the Noram parking lot in order to make the turn. Um, and then finally the semi panicked and backed up and took off and ran the street sign over. So you can drive down there and see that there's not a address post or a street name post on that street. Okay. Uh, Klein, Mr. Klein is it? Yep. Uh, I'll tell you what, Mr. Klein, you're not the first one. I know. I was complaining, we're being very, very honest. Um, and I have personally uh, drove by there many, many times and, and, and see the semis lined up. We've got a problem in this town, to be very honest with you, particularly right now. As you know, uh, our truck stop is uh, being taken over by the uh, yep. trip trip uh, program. And uh, uh, these guys have no place to, <laughs> truthfully, no place to park. So actually with that, I, I looked up the Noram cold storage, what they own on the assessor's page. They own a three and a half acre lot out over, I think is on Prospect, that is, there's gravel down that they could have be having their semis parked over there. It's less than two miles away from okay. provisions where they could I, be parking at. I guess I'm not aware of that. Uh, I will be honest with you, uh, it's a tremendous industry for our town. There's, there's absolutely no question about it along with all the rest of them that we've got going. Uh, and I'm not making any excuses. Uh, uh, when Noram uh, uh, had built that big uh, freezer program, uh, we worked with the Noram people, we worked with the neighbors, being very honest with you. Uh, Noram people, and, and I know the owners personally, want to be good neighbors. Uh, and we're in a situation right now where business has really improved and and uh, uh, the, uh, the truck parking is a problem we're well aware of. Uh, uh, we've, uh, does it happen every day because I, I drive by there some days that you know there's about three or four lined up on right. that on that street. On 8th Avenue. 8th Avenue right uh, and and I drive by the other, I'm driving by particularly on Fridays. I don't know why it is on Fridays because uh, apparently they're all getting loaded to, to go out for the weekend or wherever they have to go. But I've driven by on, on, on Fridays and I've counted as high as about uh, 10 or 12 of them all the way around their park. So I, I can appreciate your position. Um, we did, uh, Kevin, you got, uh, I'm pleased to hear Kevin Manovic. Um, you, just, I don't disagree with what he's saying. No, I don't either. And, and maybe there are some areas that we can target, like uh, the signs that uh, aren't going to allow so close to the intersections or stuff like that. That's a permanent fix. We have the influx now with the truck traffic. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to suggest that maybe Greg and I look at this and maybe we take it to the Public Safety Committee and have a, a, a long, nice look at the truck parking in that area. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, just, let's, let's take another look at this because I, I do think it's an issue. Yeah, that, that's the that's the biggest issue is that it's the intersections. I I get that you're not going to eliminate any all truck parking in that area, and that's I get that. But like it's just like in the in the intersections, like you you have to basically just take a gamble on whether or not you're going to make it through or not. I forget was it you and I was talking about it, Greg? Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, we, uh, I think, we, did you try this in several places where we just painted the yellow yeah. around the curves? Um, I was the individual that uh, Mr. Klein had spoke with last week oh, on, okay. two, on two occasions. Okay. Um, he was very understanding. He understands mm -hmm. it's a business. There mm -hmm. is going to be trucks. He knows that. So he wasn't upset, so, uh, you know, or anything like that. But, you know, it definitely has some valid concerns, um, which I... Um, made him fully aware that we are aware of the problem. Mm -hmm. We had a similar um, parking issue down by the high school. Mm -hmm. And um, in fact, it was uh, uh, the assistant police chief is the one that 
contacted me, so we visited about it, and we actually had our street department just paint some yellow um, lines, or uh, painted the curb yellow. At the, Partic particularly in, on the intersections. On, right? on this on this one specific intersection. Yeah. yeah. And I talked with uh, uh, Justin a couple weeks after the fact, and he says, problem solved. Hmm. So, you know, that is we, something that we maybe we could look at, but I think it's a good idea to, uh, Kevin and I look at it, and maybe visit with the Public Safety Committee, mm -hmm. but I do think maybe at these heavily congested areas, we at least measure back 10 or 15 feet, and rather put up signs, we could try the paint, just paint the curbs, and, mm -hmm and see what that does. And if it doesn't solve it, um, you know, then we can look at the signage. Um, yeah. Because he understands that there is going to be, it, you're not going to get rid of all of it. Oh, no. And some days are worse than others, and he knows that. And, um, I've never seen 10 or 12. I've seen upwards of six or eight trucks in that area. But Okay. Um. We're well aware of it, Mr. Pine, and, and be rest assured we will certainly check into it and try and get some relief as much as we can. I'd, I'd like to speak to the issue if I could. There's also the street in front of Mr. Pease. If the industry would provide some kind of coordination down there, golf cart, whatever it takes, and kind of help those trucks get into places they need to be. And out. The, I think that's the responsibility of the industry a little bit. But if they were in front of Mr. P's, they could, there's a three block area. There's a couple of houses in there, but it would at least give another street for them to be on, closer to the industry. But again, I'd like to at least talk to the people about getting a coordinator down there. I think if they trained them a little bit, the, the problem would disappear. The problem, the problem is these truckers come in from all over the United States, to be very honest with you. Right, and I get that. You don't get the same and, truck drivers, so... And, and they have no idea. They, they have, they have, if they find the place through the GPS, they're lucky. You know what right. I mean? But uh, they come in, and, and, and when they get here, you know, they have really no options. They just take any spot that's open. But we're well aware of the situation, and we'll see if we can give you some relief and... And, uh, and get it handled some way. Okay, thank you. you bet. Thank you for coming and, and, and visiting. Do you want the pictures back? Or? <clears throat> Keep them. <laughs> thank, <laughs> you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any, uh, is there any other uh, who wants to talk about an open discussion at this time? <clears throat> Excuse me, if not, we'll move on to the uh, Citizens Report or Thumbs Up Award. Um, Ken, here's uh, I'm going to start with you. Uh, Christmas uh, in Lamar's is a, was a wonderful theme, and I think they just knocked the socks off of my whole Saturday night. There was people everywhere trying to listen to the concert and, and get a place to go. I, I just think they did a great job. I know another year when we don't have a virus to worry about, it'll be even better, but it's, it's absolutely beautiful. I, I agree with you 100%, Ken, and uh, uh, they've done a tremendous job of putting it on uh, with all the volunteers and everything and helped and, and uh, you know, it was certainly a great show. Uh, the thing I'm really uh, uh, I'm pleased about is uh, we've got an Olson Center here uh, that has been sitting here for I don't know how many years and it's very, very little use uh, over the years. And I think we found out one thing uh, Saturday night uh, that's a great place to perform, and we need to we need to keep that promote and keep that program going. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Knapp, is he here? No. no. Uh, Mr. Donlin. I will pass this time, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Mr. Goodchild. <clears throat> Yeah, I think um, Kenny was breaking up a little bit, but I wanted to echo, I think what he was saying was I wanted to give a thumbs up to uh, Mike and Cheryl and the Browns. Um, you know, I think <laughs> they they put a lot of effort into a, a nice deal. Um, and like you said, Mr. Mayor, I, 
think in a good year it'll be quite the thing to see. But I want to thank them because it's kind of a tough year to try to pull anything off. So thumbs up to them. Thank you, Clark. I appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Webb. Yeah, I nothing today. Thank you. Okay. Okay, moving on to the consent items. All items listed under the consent agenda will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate uh, discussion on those items unless a request is made prior to the time the council votes on the motion. Today we have four of them. Number one is approval of the November 17, 2020 regular meeting minutes. Number two is a list of bills for the period ending 11-30-20. Number three is the appointment. And number four is the TF, TIF or TIF indebtedness certification and annual, annual urban renewal report. The only one I want to report on personally is the uh, appointment and I have visited with Linda Mayrose, which her term was uh, retiring, I believe it's the planning and zoning, and uh, she has agreed to uh, 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 be on that committee once again. So uh, I just want everybody to know that uh, we have contacted her and she's agreed. Uh, I have one. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, this is Clark. Yeah, Clark. Um, the appointment, is, Linda is on um, zoning adjustment, but just, just a little slight correction there. She's on zoning adjustment, not planning and zoning. Oh, excuse me. Thank you. I, the Board of Zoning is what she's on, isn't she? Yeah, yeah zoning adjustment. So I make a motion, good job, makes a motion to uh, can, uh, approve consent item 124. Hold, 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 hold her just a minute, Clark. Jason? Um, you'll have to make the motion with a little modification. List of bills, uh, page five. Uh, there's a, a bill for $45,852.98 to Slowfeld Engineering. That should be to Vanderwind and Sons. Page five of the bills. Okay, okay. Did everybody, did everybody get that? Is there any questions? Okay, hearing none, uh, Clark, go ahead and uh, approve. I'll, I'll make a second to Clark's motion. <clears throat> There's been a motion made and second to uh, approve the consent items. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> We're going to move on to the action items. <clears throat> Excuse me. And. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, ask to move the uh, number six up, which is a development agreement of the uh, Mr. Morrow's uh, Lynn Apartments, uh, to move it up to number one, uh, so that he won't have to sit here all afternoon if he didn't want to, but you're welcome to. But uh, uh, we're going to move that up to, uh, to number one. And if you'll bear with me, I'll get on. It's D6 in your, uh, in your uh, budget, or your uh, program. <coughs> Hugh Morrow of Morrow Line, Morrow Line of Properties, LLC, is requesting a city assistance in the development of Morrow Lynn Apartments. The assistance in the form of concrete parking costs uh, within the complex attached is a letter from Mr. Hugh Morrow, and I hope that everybody's had an, an, an opportunity to read it, uh, speaking to your council members. The city currently offers 100% tax exemption for a period of seven years on new multifamily residential properties as part of our urban revitalization plan. The city also approved three additional years for city tax rebate added at the end of the original seven years. The attached letter references recent action by the city granting years eight, nine, and 10 estimated city tax up front to a developer to assist with the construction of private utilities. The $45,000 
was in the form of an economic development grant. The city administrator recommends the council at this time not approve the request. The recommendation would be to offer the three additional years of city tax rebate. The city should not refrain, should refrain from paying for private instruction. The financial evidence of the three years of the city tax is estimated at $30,189. Uh, so at this time, uh, uh, Mr. Morrow, if you'd like to step up and, and share with us uh, uh, the reasons and things like that. Well, it's the uh, money would help subsidize our cost. For, we're, we're building a third building now to subsidize that cost and help with additional parking that we're going to put in in the spring. Um, yeah, so we, we really could use it. Okay. Uh, so what I, uh, what I have in the, in the uh, packet is um, I put two examples of what uh, the different development agreements would look like. And they're based off of what we've done in the past. Um, the first one, uh, what is the first one? Uh, the first one is the cash up front. Um, and the second one is if we if we add it on years eight, nine, and ten, our tax rebate. No, I got that backwards. First one is the three years, the second one is the 30. Anyway, so those are just examples. Um, you see what my recommendation is. It was my same recommendation um, the last time it was brought before the council. Um, so the recommendation and my stance is no different, but um, so it's up to the council. I just, I just. It